Hey guys, hoping all is well with everybody. In this video, we're going to be continuing the read-along of The Secret Do by Brian Chick. And the last time we finished chapter 24, so in this video, we're going to be continuing with starting chapter 25. As always, I'll show you guys any pictures as we come across them, but definitely feel free to follow along. Chapter 25, Noah on Ice. A huge penguin rounded the block of ice. He was as tall as Noah, and he looked like he weighed close to 60 pounds. As he waddled forward, the blubber on his belly rolled from side to side. He stopped in front of the scout, tipped back his head, and casually aimed his bill upward, the way penguins do. Podgy? Noah said. You are Podgy, right? The penguin didn't reply. Tank told me to meet you. Noah paused for a second. Can you understand what I'm saying? Still no response. Tank said, without warning, the penguin dropped his bill and lunged into Noah. Penguin and boy crashed downward, hit the ice, and rolled into the water. Noah sank. On one side was the icy island. On the other was the long glass wall of the aquarium. He heard muffled splashes, one after another. Penguins were diving in around him. They started to swim up and down the channel, churning the water. Noah panicked and gulped freezing water. His rear end struck something, the bottom of the tank. Looking up, he could only see the white undersides of the swimming penguins. He pushed up from the floor of the tank, but a penguin struck him down. Dazed, he sank a second time. Around him, the icy water churned. He felt faint. He was exhausted. He never should have trusted Tank. Tank had said the fate of the world depended on keeping the secrets of the zoo safe. Noah's life was an easy trade. Another penguin crashed into him. Noah gulped more water. He knew he was seconds from drowning. Chapter 26. Little Dogs of the Prairie. The prairie dogs darted between Ella's legs and across her feet. Every minute or so, one of them yipped so loudly that Ella feared that she'd stepped on it. She checked the bottom of her shoe each time, freaked out by the thought of finding an animal's remains stuck in her threads like a horrible mass of furry gum. The prairie dogs led the scouts past the zebras and camels and to the prairie dog exhibit. Called Little Dogs of the Prairie, it was set in the ground and looked like a long, shallow pool filled with sandy dirt, patches of grass, and tiny mounded hills. The walls along its perimeters were steep and high. They were meant to keep the prairie dogs from getting out. Little Dogs of the Prairie resembled a miniature desert. Across it, the animals had made at least, at least 50 holes holes that led to a complex maze of underground tunnels. The animals leapt over the perimeter wall and raced around, raising clouds of dust. Some dived into holes and immediately poked their heads back up to look around. They appeared to Ella to be reassuring themselves that their night operation was progressing smoothly. A few didn't return to the sandy pit. Instead, they bit into Ella's and Richie's jeans and pulled them along a narrow sidewalk toward the rear of their habitat. Hey, Alice said. My guess, Richie said as his foot was dragged forward, is they want us to go this way. Ella knew where they were being taken. At the back of the exhibit, stairs led to five art artificially constructed tunnels, an attraction for young visitors. The tunnels ran beneath the sandy terrain. The children were able to crawl into the tunnels and pop their heads up through special holes on the prairie dog hillsides. Their heads were protected by plastic bubbles that covered the holes and prevented the animals from chewing off their noses. This part of the zoo attraction was affectionately named Little Kids of the Prairie. The prairie dogs dragged Ella and Richie down the stairs. When they, then they scattered, leaving the children alone. The scouts dropped to their hands and knees and crawled into the main tunnel. Traces of moonlight illuminated the way. Now would be a good time to use that pen light you donated to the rhino exhibit, Ella said. Richie said nothing. He was familiar with Ella's sharp tongue. The main tunnel split into five secondary tunnels, which led into different directions. At the end of each was an open space big enough for a kid to stand up in. Ella crawled along the first tunnel. She stood at the end, poked her head up through the hole, and peered through the plastic bubble. Prairie dogs were scurrying everywhere and di diving in and out of holes. One of them saw her and dashed up to the bubble. It pressed its snout against the plastic and yipped once, as if to say hello. Ella yipped once in return, ducked into the tunnel, and crawled back to Richie. Did you find anything? he asked. No. 
A large prairie dog charged into the tunnel, brushed past them, and headed for another tunnel. At the entrance, he turned around, stood on his hind legs, looked straight at Ella, and yipped repeatedly. Then he ran back past them and fled outside. I think he just pointed us to that tunnel, Richie said. Come on, let's check it out. The scouts crawled along the passageway, and again Ella poked her head up into the plastic bubble at the end. Do you see anything? Richie said. Anything unusual? Ella glanced back and forth. Everything seemed normal. No, not at all. Suddenly a group of prairie dogs on the sandy ground charged at the bubble. They crowded the plastic and blocked um, all amongst the light of the moon. Ella lowered her head and stared at Richie. The prairie dogs surrounded the bubble! She shrugged her shoulders. I don't know what to do. Me neither. Look again. She stood up and poked her head into the little plastic dome. The same crowd of prairie dogs suddenly stood on their hind legs and leaped up to the top of the bubble. Each time an animal jumped, it landed on the plastic surface and slid down the side until its paws were either back on the ground or planted on top of another prairie dog. Ella flinched as she watched the animal strike the bubble and claw it leaving alone thin scratches on the sides. What are they doing? Richie asked. I don't know. The prairie dogs were yipping so loudly that the bubble couldn't keep out their sounds. Leaping and climbing over one another, they began to cover the bubble from the ground up. Their fuzzy undersides pressed against the plastic. They were making themselves into a prairie dog letter, the way the cheerleaders make a human pyramid. In less than a minute, the small last prairie dog reached the top of the bubble and fell across the open, only open slot left on the plastic, covering it completely. The animal stopped climbing, scratching and yipping. Without the light of the moon and the stars, the tunnel was utterly dark. The silence was eerie. Richie? Yeah? I don't... Crack! The plastic bubble shifted. Crack! All of a sudden, it dropped, and an alarming sound of metal against metal erupted. The walls rumbled, the floor shifted, and large clumps of dirt and sand tumbled in a torrent. The scouts jumped into each other's arms. What's going on? Richie squealed. What are they doing? A switch, Ella said. The bubble must have fallen against a switch. The floor was spinning. Ella, what's happening? The sound of grinding metal intensified as the whirling floor gained speed. Around and round it went. Ella looked up. The bubble was spinning and flinging air prairie dogs into the air. Ella! What? What? What's ha happening? Ella looked down. A circular section of the floor was unthreading like a screw or a soda cap. Richie! Ella screamed. What? Hold on! Richie squeezed her tightly. Not a second later, the floor fell out from under them. The scouts plummeted into the unknown reaches of dark earth. Chapter 27. Penguin Traffic No one knew he couldn't hold his breath a second longer. At that moment, two penguins bit into his jacket collar and dragged him to the surface. He gasped for air and struggled to tread water. His drenched running shoes felt like ten-pound weights strapped to his feet. Penguins were still diving off the ice. They swam around him, swirling the water with powerful strokes of their flippers. They looked like wild black and white torpedoes with wings. Terrified, Noah struggled to think of Megan. He imagined her face and her smile. Megan needed him. As Penguin made waves splash Noah's face, he forced himself to be brave. He was growing colder every moment. He needed to get out of the water, but the bank was too steep. His only hope was to swim around the icy island and to find a spot with much more gradual incline. He took a deep breath and plunged forward, swimming alongside the penguins with a sloppy breaststroke. To his right, he could see through the glass wall of the aquarium into the room that he'd stood in so often. How weird to be look at, to be inside looking out. He surfaced for air and swam toward the corner, where there was no glass, only steel and concrete. All the corners had been built in this way to support the huge aquarium. They were the only spots that blocked the visitor's view. At each corner, the bottom half of the icy island stopped short of the wall, while the top half stretched, stretched 
completely across the channel, creating a fully submerged tunnel that connected two sides of the aquarium square. A second before reaching the corner, Noah dunked his head and swam into the shadowy tunnel, kicking and paddling and doing his best to ignore the penguins bumping against him. He turned his body with the turn of the corner and then he swam out into the other side of the aquarium, where he thrashed his way to the surface and gasped for air. It took all of his strength just to tread water. He was freezing, and the stuffing in his jacket felt like lead. The penguins continued to torpedo around him. One jumped over his head, and another squeezed through his legs. Swimming in the crowd was Podgy, looking even bigger in the water than on the ground. Floating with his head and back above the surface, he seemed lazy and unconcerned. He circled the boy so closely that his flipper swept against him. Almost choking, Noah managed to say, What do you want from me? Paji swam behind Noah, plunged through his legs, and bolted up with Noah s- situated across his wide back. What are you doing? Noah squealed. He instinctively wrapped his arms around Paji's fat body and grabbed two handfuls of blubber on the penguin's neck. I don't trust you. I can't. Paji lurched forward. Noah lay with his stomach flat against the bird's feathered back. As water spilled off his cheeks, the scout wrestled himself into a stable position. The wet penguin was so slippery. All of a sudden, Paji plunged. Noah barely had time to inhale and hold his breath. In seconds, Penguin and Boy were speeding through the water several feet below the surface. Noah's legs dangled behind Podgy's rear, and he fought the overwhelming urge just to let go. They traveled into the tunnel at the second corner of the aquarium. Darkness enveloped them. A moment later, they burst out onto the other side, and Podgy sailed into the air in a graceful arc. Noah took a deep breath before they splashed back down. Paji swerved to avoid the slower penguins, and Noah ducked to keep from striking his head against the penguins above them. The big penguins swiftly covered the length of the third wall, rounded the next corner, and emerged on the fourth and final side of the aquarium. The penguin porpoised into the air, and again Noah inhaled and held his breath. This time, Paji dived to the bottom of the tank. He traveled so close to the floor that Noah's toes skipped off the concrete. The penguins ahead dodged to the other side of the aquarium to open a path. When Paji and Noah swam into the fourth corner, Paji jolted and Noah nearly slid off his back. Though it was dark, he could faintly make out a big hole in the side of the ice island, but not an ordinary big hole. It was a cave. A hidden cave. Paji tucked his flippers against his sides and headed straight toward it. Noah shut his eyes and squeezed the penguin tightly. The two of them slipped inside the cave and left the world that no one knew behind. And that is where I will end the video, ending at chapter 27. But in the next video, we'll be continuing with chapter 28. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in our continuation of The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. But as always, guys, please take good care of yourselves, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching.